Guys, welcome back to another episode of Atlas Survival Shelters. I hope you're doing great today. Guys, hey, listen, my channel is fun. We cover bomb shelters, survival gear. So make sure you like, subscribe, and always share my videos. And also hit that little bell thing, okay? That little bell indicator lets you know when my videos co come in. Because I notice I got 82,000 subscribers now, but sometimes not all of you see my videos. So make sure you hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss this stuff. It's getting pretty good. But you know, guys, one of the things that I worry about is like getting my butt caught in Los Angeles when the SHTF it means when the shit hits the fan. And that could be anything from an EMP to an earthquake to whatever. But I have plans to get my butt out of town and you should make plans to get your butt out of your city too. So you gotta ask yourself, how are you gonna get your ass out of town when all the traffic is tied up and the highways blocked and the only conclusion is you're gonna either have to walk it you're gonna skateboard it or you're gonna ride a bike out of town so I've come to the conclusion that I don't want to skateboard and I don't want to walk so I'm gonna ride a bike out of town so then you get into the types of bikes so I have been accumulating all these different bikes and these really cool bikes so I got this one here now this is a Montau military grade paratrooper now you see how it folds up that's pretty cool this is for guys who jump out of airplanes now if you really want to go get something that's military grade, I got this. I got a Swiss Army bike. I picked up one from Major Surplus and Survival. Both of these you got to pedal. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm going to go check out one of these electric bikes. I watch a uh, another YouTuber and he has a channel that he covers nothing but electric bikes. So he did a video at this place called Electric Bike Center, Electric Bicycle Center. Here, I'll show it. This is the guy's store. So there's a guy named Sam over there, and he's very passionate, he's very energetic, and he's very knowledgeable about bikes. So I'm going to take Brad, the producer, with me. Matter of fact, you guys don't know Brad. Come here, Brad. Say hi. This is Brad. Hey, what's he's, up, guys? He's the guy behind the camera, so you know who's behind the camera. Sweet Mary, mother of God. Get used to him. You're going to start seeing him a little bit more. But anyway, so we're going to go see Sam. He's got like two, 300 bikes there, and he's very knowledgeable. So we're going to jump in the old yellow truck, and we're going to zoom on over there. So guys, this is Sam. He's the owner of Electric Bike Center. He's a he's a guy like me. Seems like he's very passionate about the bikes. So Sam, what I'm looking for is a bike to get a mother or somebody with an elderly person or a couple kids out of Los Angeles for yep. when shit hits the fan. Well, cargo bikes are the way to go because you can like you can like pack a lot of gear on them, and you can carry multiple batteries with you as well. Uh, turn makes a great one behind us here that we were just looking at. Now, what's the advantage to the turn? Now, I saw it on YouTube and I saw that it stands up, it breaks down, it's collapsible, it will go up in the elevator. I saw all kinds of things about it. Yeah, I mean, even if you've got a dead battery, you still got a working bicycle. It's going to be a little on the heavier side. That would suck trying to climb a hill. I've personally done it on dead batteries. So I got, I got two examples here. If you're a single guy and you just want to get out of Los Angeles and you want to go the furthest range and it's your strictly your bug out bike, I'm going to let you pick out one bike that you would jump on. Then second of all, I want you to pick out a bike that if you, you have to take your kids or your father which is or your mother, which is 90 years old, you got to get them out of town. So you got a choice of two bikes here. You got a cargo bike to get the mom out of town or the kids and then the bike you personally can put your fat ass in and get out of town. Well, they're both going to be off-road style bikes more than likely. Maybe a fat tire bike, but light enough that I can hump it up over an obstacle in the road. For myself, I know the turn's done really well and they've done that in the past. I might even try to get on a high bike that has a dual battery. Um, is, it, the, is the dual battery the key? Or can't you just carry extra batteries and swap them out? You could carry extra batteries and swap them out, but it's nice having it where you've got a dual... You've got at least a thousand watt hour battery minimum, um, you know, a 2,000 watt hour. I've got certain bikes on my showroom floor that have upwards of 2,000 watt hours. And then you have the watt hours of the battery or the amperage, right? Okay. So the bigger the amperage the battery is, it's like the bigger your gas tank is. So the voltage of the battery combined with the uh, 
wattage of the motor gives you your torque, your power, but it's the it's the range that you're looking for, and that's the amp hour or the watt hour of the battery. Okay, so amps are the gas tank. Yep. Watts or the horsepower. Yep, you got it. So I want big amps and big horsepower. Because I'm a big guy and I want to so, go a long ways. So you probably would probably end up building your own bike then and getting some kit from somewhere and do some Frankenstein massive I don't want to do that. We just want to buy it. You just want to buy a bike outright? Yeah. That's already on the market? Um, I'm going to say either the turn, GSD, get stuff done, or maybe the result. No, that, that's for the family though. What, what yeah. about the single guy? And then keep in mind, this is a bike I want to get out of town in, but... I also want to take it down to the beach cruising. The thing with electric bikes are, it's like discovering the fountain of youth. You get on a bike, it's going to make you feel like a kid again. You can ride it at the beach in an emergency situation when you've expended all your gas from your generator out of your motorhome and you got all your provisions and you're ready to go. Just grab your e-bike out of the garage. It really doesn't matter what e-bike you got. Just get on it and go. You're going to be that stealth ninja until you hit the desert and then you're going to be like, oh, This guy's man. a salesman, eh? <laughs> <You> gotta, <laughs> you gotta, tell you, I'm going to hire you. You want to sell bomb shelters? work now you got a key or what you're already on you're on level one pedal assist this is the most efficient way and the best range you're going to get out of it. it's got a 16 amp hour battery and i have personally ridden one of these bikes 40 miles with an 11 amp hour battery so with a 16 amp hour battery you can add another 50 percent of that easily and that's just with one battery so as you pedal the bike it's going to give you power at any time if you need extra juice just hit the throttle right here so is this pedal assist only it's both just start pedaling. Don't give it any gas. Pedal. I blew my hat off my head. Oh, Man, you just feel the power in this thing. Now this one here is gigantic compared to that turn or that turn. I was right. So, how does this work? You just start pedaling? Will this come out so you can put somebody in there that's yes. an adult? Yes. Did right on the back of the bike, is that what made you fall in love with him? Yes. Yeah. We, we did a, we did a one month motorcycle trip before that. We dated for about three or four years before I actually got her here to America. I called this one the Bobber, but this company is a, a Chinese based company. The Cheetah. Okay. It's called the Cheetah from CV Bikes. They're out of Rancho Cucamonga. We kind of helped them with the design of this, this bike. This thing's badass. When looking. they when they brought this bike in, they brought it to the shop, and I said, "Call it the Bobber." And they didn't know what a Bobber was, and I'm like, "Come on, guys." Wow. So they're still calling it the Cheetah. I told him, look, this is a class three 28 mile an hour bike with throttle. I said, you gotta have a bigger battery. Those big fat tires are gonna drain that battery fast. Really? So I said, go to a, so they had a 13 amp hour battery. We we're, talk, were talking about amperage earlier, remember? Yeah. So this got a 13 gallon gas tank on it. I said, no, the thing's gonna die in 25 miles with that battery. Get a bigger battery. So they designed a 17 and a half amp hour battery. So you got a 17 and a half gallon tank. It originally came up with mechanical disc brakes, and I was like, no, it goes 28 miles an hour. You gotta put some hydraulic disc brakes on there. And then I said, headlight looks bitching. It looks like right off my 66 Triumph TR6 Trophy. And I said, it's got that totally cool hidden battery look. And at the price point that we're selling these at, two grand to 2,400, it's gonna be a total rock star, knock it out of the park. This thing is, bike. this thing is badass looking. You should go give it a test ride in the parking lot. <laughs> This is the Cheetah from CV Bike. Brad, say hello to everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for uh, watching. <laughs> well, that's cool. That Now, that is nice. That is super, yeah. super nice. So, my plan is the family has to get out of LA and they got to go to the destination. 
Remember what happened during Katrina? Yeah. You know, I was in Thailand at the time when Katrina happened. My sister contacted me and she says, man, there's bodies literally floating down the street over here. And I was like, what? They had a similar situation over where my, my wife's from. The village was underwater. They had like the 100 year flood. The Mekong River overflowed. And literally it was just the tops of the roofs that were there. Now I was down in Malaysia getting a couple triumphs off of a container and, and bringing them into the country. And she took off and went home. She's got photos of her being brought into the village on a canoe. And all that's, the water still hasn't recessed yet. And this is the great thing about a community like that. They are self-sufficient. They're not waiting for the government or anybody to help yeah, them out. So as far as, a, uh, as far as a cargo bike goes to get your kids out of town or just take your kids riding down the boardwalk or, or to get your mother or your dad who's elderly out of town, a cargo bike's definitely gonna be the way to go. So I designed my own uh, bicycle kit. It was a gas-powered bike kit, but it wasn't run on gas. Lear is a company that makes four-stroke engines for like uh, weed eaters and uh, gardening. And I took that and with go-ped parts with a drive spindle, I use little propane tanks, little green ones for camping. How long did it run on a little propane tank? Now about 20 miles. Really? Yeah. And it's super quiet. I saw that on YouTube where a guy, he had one propane tank and then he had two backups. Well, and a little, little camping, I, home and tanks. I, I, I designed that years ago and we put it up on YouTube. So we might have gotten the idea from our YouTube video. And it was a friction drive spindle. The great thing about that is all your gas powered bike kits, they have an extra chain going. You got all this drag. So yeah. you've ruined the bicycle aspect of the bike completely. You got to pull a clutch lever in, got all this extra drag. My bike with the drive spindle, I could remove the drive spindle with just pressure, release it from the tire, and I could ride my bike up and down the boardwalk. I could ride it like a regular bicycle. But it was cool because it was super quiet. Four stroke Lear motor with propane. We are going to take one bike and we are going to put a motor on it. We're going to convert it from gas to propane and we're going to do like Sam said. So that's going to be one other bike we're going to do right there. I saw that on YouTube. I was like, I got to do that. I still have two or three prototypes from when we were starting to think about how to do it. We want to do the build from scratch. So what we'll do is we'll probably take it apart and then make it look like we built it. You can do that. Yeah. It's Absolutely. called reverse, reverse engineering. Absolutely. We'd be cheating guys. Okay. But anything for TV. <laughs> All right guys. So this is electric bike center and this is Sam. And I got to admit, he's the best salesman <laughs> I've seen. You guys just want to see an energetic, passionate salesman come to electric bike center here in Fullerton, California, but he's got every type of bike. What hours are you open? Tell everybody when you're open and close. <laughs> We're open six days a week, 10 to six, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 10 to five. We were open seven days a week when we moved into this larger location. Yeah. We had to justify the move and the higher overhead. But after two years of working seven days a week, man, I said enough of that. So on Labor Day, two years ago, I said, that's it. We're gonna start taking Sundays off. So Sundays, we're not here. We're out riding our bikes. It's Lord's Day, you, you can't work Sundays. No. Anyway, bud, no. thanks a lot, man, for having me down. Yeah, hey, you got it. All right, guys, so we're gonna pick us up electric bike and we're gonna show you guys how to get jazz out of Los Angeles for when shit hits the fan. So guys, stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching this episode of Atlas Survival Show. So guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a ride with me and Brad over to uh, the electric uh, bicycle center in Fullerton, California and seeing Sam and boy, he was a hoot, wasn't he? He's a character and I know what you're thinking. You shaved your beard off. Yeah, I did and guess what? I feel super freaking naked right now. I am going to let it grow back. Guys, as always, make sure you like, subscribe and share my video and again, hit that little bell indicator. Guys, so as always, I love you. See you on the next video. <laughs>